Have you found yourself struggling to be free of something, to get to the next level in life? Man, this video is for you. Stay tuned. <laughs> title this is a very specific video and maybe you are a person that is new to the channel and wondering what is this all about well this is Kim Yetta connects and I am your host Kim Yetta yours truly and this channel focuses on living free by faith and always on fire for Jesus Christ and that's just not a slogan that's really how I attempt to live my life. I want to thank you so much for joining me. If you're not a subscriber, please click the subscribe button below and you'll be notified and the notification bell and you'll be notified when I have videos come out. I do my best to have videos out every Tuesday and Friday. This is the second full month of my new channel and I couldn't be more thrilled. Now, I want to share with you something from the book of Exodus. So grab your Bible. Alrighty, if you're new to the faith, that's perfectly fine. Exodus is the second chapter in the Bible after Genesis. And we're going to go to the book of Exodus, chapter 13, verse 18. Okay, we're going to start uh, book of Exodus, chapter 13, verse 18. And let me set the stage for y'all just a bit, okay? Um, and so the children of Israel, as you know, they had been oppressed um, for many, many years, uh, in Egypt, all righty? And so they were oppressed and they were enslaved, they were tortured, the firstborns were killed, and they had been through a lot. They were enslaved, they were in chains, basically. And the Lord used Moses as a deliverer to help deliver them by that mighty hand of God out of the children of Israel. And the book of Exodus is an excellent book to read if you are coming up out of something. It's so inspirational and so encouraging, but it's also historical as well. And so the children of Israel are being led out of Egypt to the promised land. Now, before I go on with the story, is there anybody that has that kind of experience where hallelujah god has delivered you from something hallelujah you're going to the next phase of your life hallelujah i once was bound and now i'm free i used to have um challenges with overeating i used to have challenges with debt or i used to have challenges with people or i have used to have challenges with my mate whatever it is whatever that's enslaved you i want you to imagine the feeling that taste of freedom. Oh my God. Remember this now. Jesus died for your freedom. Uh, the Bible says it is for freedom that Christ has set me free. Stand firm. This is Galatians 5. Stand firm and don't be burdened by the yoke of slavery. Well, the children of Israel, they didn't have the vantage point of having um, Exodus, uh, in Exodus, but they didn't have the advantage of having Galatians at that point. Um, and there was no uh, Christ redeemer in their lives at that point. So their freedom um, was really this freedom from their oppressors, okay? Now, I want you to imagine, finally, they had gone through this process when Moses would go to Pharaoh and he would, uh, he would say, this is what God said, let my people go. And Pharaoh would say, yeah, I'll let them go. And then something would happen. Pharaoh would, would, would renege on it, okay? And then Moses uh, would do certain things. Different things would happen. Read the whole book. I don't have time to go through all of it. But we're going to pick up the story in Exodus 3, where hallelujah, the children of Israel have finally been set free and they are leaving out of Egypt. How do you think they felt? I can tell you how I would feel. I would be celebrating, I'd be grabbing up as much as I could. We'd be dancing, we'd be barbecuing, we'd be happy getting up away from our oppressors. Finally, our ancestors had been oppressed by these people and we've been oppressed and finally we're free. We're going to dance our way out of there. We're going to celebrate. We're going to party and we are gone. 
Interestingly enough, that was not the posture of the children of Israel. Their posture was different. Now, let's go to the word. Exodus chapter 13, okay? Grab my Bible, give me a moment. I'm gonna grab my glasses. Y'all know I need to read with my glasses now at the right young age of 45. All right, so Exodus 13. And I don't wanna pick up an 18 just yet. Let's go to when, uh, verse 17, okay? Um, so they're getting ready to cross the Red Sea. 17, when Pharaoh let the people go, finally he let them go. God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country though that was shorter. So this is the first point I want to make. When God takes you um, uh, from uh, bondage to freedom, it's not gonna be a straight and narrow, ro narrow road. It's not going to be simple. It's not going to be all black and white. It may, he may take you through a path, hallelujah. He may take you through a path that doesn't look like what you think. I'm just thinking about my own story where it took God taking me out of Atlanta, Georgia, away from my family, away from my kin, away from the people who loved me, away from job opportunities in my home of Georgia, God sent me to New York City because my freedom was, a, he took me way out of the way, but it was in New York City all alone that I dedicated my life to Jesus. It was in New York City all alone that my life changed. It was in New York City all alone that I, I got on fire for the Lord. It was in New York City that I met my husband. Yeah, and I brought him on back to Georgia. But that's not what my plan would have been, but that was a part of my freedom. Watch this. So look at the parallel. So don't, don't get overly concerned if God is bringing you out of something and it doesn't look like what you think it ought to look like. You keep walking with the Lord. Amen. So let's keep see. Let's keep reading. So it says that God could have taken them through a shorter route, but he didn't do that. All righty. He led them, verse 17 again, when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter. For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. Lord have mercy. So the Lord told us, the Lord told us, I had to take them a different way because it was the best thing for them. Lord have mercy. God had to take Kim Yetta out of Georgia because it was the best thing for her to humble her, Lord. Mm. I, he had to humble me. He had to get me alone. He had to get me to a place of repentance. So the Lord said, I'm gonna take you out but it's for a, a greater purpose and a greater reason. And he did the same thing with them. Now, verse 18. So God led the people around by the desert road toward the Red Sea. So I remember studying this many years ago, probably 17 years ago. I studied the book of Exodus and I used a map to study it. And it's amazing because if you look at Egypt and Canaan, the promised land on the map, is really a straight shot. That's what the Bible says. Their journey was supposed to be 40 days, but it was way, way more than that, as you know. Uh, but on a map, you see they literally go around the promised land, sort of. It's quite fascinating to study. And so it says God took them all the way around, okay? But he did it for a purpose. Then it says, B, the second part of 13, uh, verse 18, NIV versions, it says the Israelites went up and out of Egypt armed for battle. It says they went up out of Egypt armed for battle. And y'all, I don't know if you can see this, but in my Bible, I wrote, y'all, can y'all see that? I wrote, hmm. Why are they armed for battle when they are headed to their promised land? 
And then three years ago when I was studying this, I wrote in my journal, July 16th, look at that date, 2017, I wrote, why are you armed? And I wrote, the Israelites went out of Egypt armed for battle. This is curious to me because the children of Israel were free to leave Egypt. They had not crossed the Red Sea, but God had delivered them out of the hand of their oppressors. They had gone through the ceremonial exercise of consecrating the firstborn. But verse 17 and 18 shows that God deliberately led them down a different path in order to avoid a potential battle. By the end of verse 18, though, the Bible says they left Egypt armed for battle. That's the NIV version. The King James version says they left in a harn they left in a, a military position, a harness for battle. The Holman Christian Standard says they left in battle formation. The message said uh, they left in a military uh, formation. Wow. Sorry to interrupt the video, but the ESV uses the language equipped for battle. And I thought that was so awesome and is so in line with what I was talking about. So I just wanted to mention that for those who like further study. I hope y'all are following me as I get ready to close this. The children of Israel, they have been set free. They were headed to their promised land, but they had to go out ready to battle. Don't think that because you're facing a battle right now that you're not headed to your promised land. Do you understand? God had to lead them on a different path because he knew they were not ready for battle just yet. But it says they were armed. Are you armed every day? I wake up every day and I'm armed and I'm ready for battle. That's how you have to live, especially when you're coming out of place of oppression to deliverance to freedom. You got to be ready. You got to have your mind armed. You got to have the word constantly going and playing in your mind, in your heart, in your head. That's being armed. You got to constantly have worship music playing. That's being armed. You got to surround yourself with believers who are going to speak life into you. That's being armed. You've got to read God's word and you got to memorize scripture and you got to meditate on scripture. That's being armed. You understand what I'm saying? You got to know the promises of God. So you are armed. So when the enemy comes in to attack you on your way to your promised land, you don't kowtow but you're ready you're ready are you armed or are you gonna run back to Egypt when things get tough not me bring it I'm armed and I'm ready hope you are too thanks for joining me